Hello everyone, and welcome to the presentation of MIND, a translator to embed mathematical expression inside Spackle query. I am Damien, and I'm going to present that work that has been jointly done with Gezim, Klaus, Julio, and Jens from different universities across Ireland and Germany. But first of all, let's have a look at a concrete example, um, an example dealing with carbon-14 and fossils. Let's imagine that we have a set of fossils and a big list of fossils and the, the records could be, you know, modeled like so using LDF. So you declare a fossil of type fossil, a fossil ID, and for each fossil you have its Cartesian coordinates, X and Y, its discovery year, the fossil has been found in 2020 for instance, and then its associated carbon-14 ratio. So the typical uh, fossil record would look like so, and now let's consider the following conditions. So let's say that we want to extract all the fossils from the database, which are, you know, found within the last 10 years, 100 kilometers around a specific position, and older than 1,000 years. So to do so, first to extract all the fossils using Sparkle, so let's type a bit of Sparkle here, you, we could do, you know, select F, where F is of type fossil. If now we want to comply with the first condition, we just need to look at the found in predicate and then build a filter. So the filter would be the difference between the current the current year 2020 and the year of discovery y, and we want it to be less than less or equal than 10. Um, to have um, positioning, then the, the, the second condition, we could use the classic uh, Cartesian uh, distance formula and then write that down into a filter. Um, obviously, we obviously need now to tweak it a bit because we need to compare the square of the distance and not really the distance because there is no square root built in in Sparkle. But it's still manageable and doable easily. But the real complicated conditions come with the older than 1,000 years. To do so, uh, we need to have a look at the C14 ratio. Um, the, the dating the fossil requires w to, to compute the following formula, which is a log divided by a certain value, time, and the half time. And the problem is that this formula involves a logarithm, and it's impossible by the standard to compute logarithm in Sparkle. So one way of doing though still being compliant with the standard functions, plus, minus, times, and divide, would be to use uh, the decomposition in series of the logarithm, which uh, whose the formula is represented here. And if we only consider the first three terms and write some bindings, we could approximate that, and it would uh, look like so in the, in the in the following Sparkle queries. So you can see now that you have we have to use uh, lots of bindings which are prone to error only considering the first three terms and obviously i've been simplistic in my in my example very simplified for the sake of clarity first off we could have you know um, push the approximation in series to further terms and involve more terms and obviously the more you involve terms the more complicated it is you know to type um, properly the queries uh, and obviously we have been placing ourselves in a Cartesian coordinate system, and it's not the case at all on the Earth. So usually you have the lat and the longitude. Um, and when you have latitude and longitude, you need to play with the Haversian formula, which implies sines, cosines, square root, and even an eight and two function, which is really complicated now to approximate. So the, the, the query designer would have to write multiple decompositions in series, it's really complicated, cumbersome, tedious, uh, prone to error. So how, how are query designers doing that uh, in life today? So usually what they, are, uh, what they are using is that they are using the provided built-in functions from the various big players um, from the literature. So for instance, Virtuoso provides the BIF prefix with a set of functions available behind uh, GraphDB, the F prefix, Gina, the math, and at the moment there is a working group trying to you know 
add mathematical functions into the next version of the Sparkle standard, but still the problems are the following. So if you are deciding to go for the built-in function with the big uh, triple store that you are using, then you, you have a lack of interoperability between the engines, obviously, um, for two reasons. First, it's not the same syntax, first off. So if you change uh, engines, you need to change also the queries. And second, the portfolio of available um, mathematical operators are not the s and functions are not the same from one engine to another one. So if you need to write complex federated queries, you are a bit stuck. And if you go for the manual writing, then you need to compute approximations. Uh, it's really complex and prone to error um, for the query writer, I mean, and you have this kind of impossibility to properly write really complex math formula. So that's why here uh, we come with MINDS. Uh, we propose and share it openly, and MINDS stands for Mathematical Expressions Inside Sparkle Queries. So you can have access to the code directly on the GitHub, and the idea of MINDS is that it translates mathematical expression into a list of bindings that are all Sparkle compliant. So this is really the, the important point. Those bindings are bind blah 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 as variable, and then thanks to that, the obtained query, they can be executed by any kind of evaluator seamlessly. Um, and obviously it's easing the query design. To do so, we are also providing a Python interface that I'm going to present you briefly right now. So in practice, um, if we just reconsider the fund in the last 10 years, you just type 2020 minus variable Y and BIM, you obtain the binding. So the binding is actually pretty simple here, but you can see that there are some divided by 100 and so on and so forth. And the idea here is that you can also tune the precision um, through the precision variable and decide how precise should would be your result. So that it, it's not really useful here on that example, but it's really useful when you are computing some complex approximation, complex decompositions, you might want you know, to have a certain degree of precision. Um, just having also the, the delta x square plus delta y square example, so respecting a kind of a usual syntax where the power is the star star, um, you can just type that directly into minds and obtain the binding. And then the query designer can copy paste directly the binding to its query and then compute the filters using the the result variable obtained at the end of the binding. Now having a look at a more complex example, so x squared plus exponential of y plus 3z, then you can see that mind is actually breaking into pieces the expression, uh, it identifying the y plus 3z as a common block, so that's why you can see on the left hand side a block of uh, y plus 3z that are repeated everywhere, and then Mind is, is seeing that it would require to compute that formula to have an approximation of the exponential using its decomposition in series. So I'm representing here the first five terms. And this exponential is actually uh, computed using one binding to create a sub result and then um, the sub one variable. And then mind generate the final uh, binding, which is x squared plus sub 1 as a result. So thanks to that approach, we can compute some really complex uh, sparkle, uh, some really complex mathematical expressions, you know, breaking into pieces recursively the expression and then going upstairs. So as you can see here, the exponential decomposition is embedded into minds, but it's also the case of several other common math functions, such as the main trigonometric one, the sin, cos, and tangent, and also the logarithm, the square root, and even the octant too, which is really useful for the other serine uh, formula, as we saw in the example. Now, a bit of uh, discussion on the, the, the performance and, and the precision of mine. So first off, the binding generation takes less than one second. So once the um, query designer has dropped or his or her expression, in an instant, you have the bindings. It's really fast. Uh, the evaluation, so we compare the evaluation of our approximation, our big bindings, 
with the approxy with the with the user for instance building function and we ended up into having the same order of magnitude to compute the queries meaning that it does not add you know uh, minds and those bindings do, do not add additional uh, computational times in terms of accuracy obviously when you use the decomposition when you know that your formula is implying decomposition in series then obviously the more terms you are allowing minds to compute in the bindings the more precise uh, you become so the more you push the better it is but the, the, you already have 95 percent of uh, accuracy only using the seven the first seven terms so it, it's quite good actually and in terms of optimizations mine comes with a set of uh, already uh, uh, known constants such as pi or exponential and in addition it's also taking advantage of the periodicity of the the trigonometric function for instance to to reduce uh, the the variable of of the function for instance so i think i made the round of minds um be aware that it's it has been and it is used in several european projects actually not as a tool but as a as a, as a, as a sidekick if i can say so um, when some people they have you know to compute some complicated mathematical expression they just go on mines brrap, they obtain their queries and then they can they can push that so it has been used in several projects uh, obviously on the website we provide additional examples uh, additional details technical details such as the grammar for instance that you can type in mines and as all is open source i would you know I would be glad if some people you know would also continue and contribute and share some additional decomposition in series for instance um, to be pushed into the code so would you have any question i would be really delighted to answer them so feel free to drop me a line and to chat about mine thank you very much